Nestled on Devonshire Street in the city's financial district, Boston Wine Exchange recently hosted a rare and impressive event with winemaker Rob Mondavi Jr. Rob led a lively tasting of some of his delicious everyday wines, including a few from his new Spellbound label. We spoke with Rob about his approach to winemaking as he discussed tasting notes on each bottle, as well as the inside story behind the Spellbound name. Uh, my name is Rob Mondavi. We're here at the Boston Wine Exchange. We've got a great tasting going on today, and we're going to walk you through some of the wines. So what do you say we jump on into it? One of the wines that, that, uh, that I really like to start with, uh, really in any occasion, is a nice rosé, especially in summer. This is the Isabel Mondavi rosé, which is my mother's rosé. And uh, we made this for her specifically because she wanted a rosé that had more richness and more body than the classical rosé or blush wine. And what we do is we take Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon and we create this wine. So when you're drinking it, you know, it has texture, depth, body, and intensity. Uh, this is what I call a wine drinker's rosé, and it's something that I think everybody should have in their fridge during the summertime. Uh, you know, heaven forbid we get a little nutty with wine, but I love throwing this on ice and having it at my house. It's a good way to break some rules. So we have uh, you know, some uh, the whites, uh, but over on that my counterpart makes. What I have here is the Spellbound wines, and I'm the lead winemaker on these, and my partners are very supportive. We decide what style we make, and then I get to go ahead and go out there and get after it. So on the Cabernet Sauvignon, thematically we wanted to have really beautiful wines that have a lot of fruit up front. Uh, and then as the wine evolves, as you're tasting the wine, uh, really start to get the texture in the oak and the tannins on the finish. And what I like about that is it allows for you to enjoy this wine while you're cooking and with food. So when, uh, when we get into the Cabernet, I have these great cassis flavors, uh, a lot of blackberries and, uh, and some of that kind of spice and clove and a little bit of that uh, like suede leather and the aromatics. Really pretty wine and I think it's just absolutely stellar. And these are all small production wines that we've got here. This is just uh, about 3,000 cases. Uh, the rosé is about 3,000 as well. So uh, you know you're gonna have to look for these wines in places like Boston Wine Exchange because there's just not enough wine to get out there and get around. Now Petit Sirah is uh, the next wine still from Spellbound. And the Petite Syrah, I think, is really quite remarkable. A lot of times people say, oh, I'm afraid of Petite Syrah because they have so many tannins. We work really hard to make sure that you get everything Petite Syrah has to offer of the, the fruit, the minerality, the beautiful violet aromatics that it has, and kind of some of the cobbler characteristics. And what I really do, uh, I think, very well on this wine is to make sure that it's got all that, but the tannins are not overwhelming. The tannins are that kind of drying nature of the wines, and we balance that by really shortening up the time that the skins and the wine spend together so we don't get too many of those tannins. This, to me, is one of my favorite wines to make because it's a great challenge, and when we put this in the bottle, it's absolutely dynamite. Uh, it is. Good for the heart. How we got the name Spellbound is uh, I came home uh, one day in 2004, and I brought some wines from the cellar during harvest. And I was having dinner with some friends and my wife. We're pouring the wines, we're tasting them. My wife's like, oh, I'm just absolutely spellbound. I'm like, that's right, baby. You know, the wines are good tonight. And, you know, and she just starts laughing. And she's like, I'm talking about the moon right there. There's a huge harvest moon behind me. I, of course, think she's talking about these, these amazing wines I made. She, you know, so, so we had a good chuckle about that. And one of the uh, folks we were having dinner with said, you know what, you've got to name a wine spellbound. You know, that's that's got to be what it is. And then so, uh, you know, uh, the wines did come to pass, and, and we ended up using the moon on the label. And I think it's a, it's a really uh, good representation of, of keeping wines lighthearted, but also making some damn good wines and, and good quality wines. And so that's that's really what we uh, what we aim to do with Spellbound. Hey, we, we, uh, we have to make good wine. We have to drink this too. And that's, uh, that's what kind of tastings we're doing here at the Boston Wine Exchange. These guys are a lot of fun. Uh, they think they definitely know their wines, and you should definitely come down and check this place out and get some wines here.